hi, thanks for watching my video. So it's Halloween week, figured we should have some Halloween themes videos. Apologies if this video is a bit too fast. I did a speed build and it ended up being pretty big. So um, it's pretty fast paced, but otherwise it would end up being like 45 minutes. This ended up taking like almost two hours to, to build this. Which is gonna shock you when you see the, fi the finished product because you'll probably look at it and go, that took, that took two hours. But yes, it did, all right? It did actually take two hours. I don't really do uh, speed builds so often, but I really wanted to do one for Halloween because one of my favorite things to do in the lead up to Halloween and Christmas as well, I love watching other people's speed builds and um, listening to people's voiceovers. I don't know why, just... It really, it feels so in theme watching spooky builds and Christmas builds. So I thought I would try and do a little spooky build for you guys. So this is, um, it's like a, a hybrid between two things because I let my patrons choose what I would build. And the options were between Haunted Mansion and I think it was like a spooky carnival. And what fucking happened? They both got the same amount of votes. <laughs> So I decided what I would do is I'll just do them both, merge them together. So this is the spooky castle element. It's meant to be like a spooky fair, like not a fun fair, but just a fair that has a haunted mansion in it. I think at the end of it, I, I think it turned out all right. Um, if you watch a lot of my speed builds, you know I'm pretty critical of my uh, building skills because I'm not the best builder. Well. I'm not even a good builder, but, but um, I was quite happy with this. And this uh, will be on the gallery as well. If you want it, then you can download it. I tried to make it so that it would be um, the kind of place that was actually usable. So it's a uh, community lot. I think I listed it under like National Park or something. Um, and I tried to make it so that your Sims could actually spend a few hours here so there are like a few little stalls and bars and places where you can get something to eat a few like activity stations so hopefully it works out okay hopefully you like it but yeah that's probably about all i'm going to say about the build i don't really like just chatting about the build all the time so i thought with it being halloween probably talk about some halloween topics which is one of my favorite things to talk about Whenever I think about Halloween, I think about uh, back home in the UK because uh, I think I've mentioned it f uh, before, but where I'm from, I guess a, a bit of a city, it's not technically a city, but it's it looks like one. Um, but I'm actually from like a tiny, tiny, tiny village inside the city. It's like the edge of it. So it's literally a hybrid between a city and like a farmerish area there's loads of fields and there's there's even like a, a tiny farm in this village <laughs> so it's like pretty much in between uh it's like a country cotswold looking village um right next to a city and it's really small like i said there's less than three thousand people in this village um everyone knows everyone and it's a really old village as well there's loads of history with it so I thought I'd maybe uh, just tell a few a few stories. I wouldn't say they're particularly scary, but uh, they're in the nature of the spooky realm. So when I was a kid, um, I'll mention as well, this village has got a primary school and a secondary school. Um, I know it might be a bit confusing because I was a bit confused with Americans because you guys have three schools. We just have two. So primary school is from the ages of about four or five up until you're about 10 or 11. And then secondary school is from when you're 10 or 11 up until you're, um, I think it's 16. And then you go to college for two years till you're 18. So this tiny village has got a primary school and a secondary school. I went to both of them. And um, the primary school was just a really small school. It was a, a Victorian building and it looked like a Victorian building. There was a lot of history there. And it had one of those old um, school bells. Like, uh, you know, when like recess is over, the teacher will ring the school bell to tell you that you've got to go inside. So we had at the, at the top of our um, building was like a little bit of a tower and it had uh, one school bell hanging where there should have been two and it, it had always been that way since any of us could remember and we had like a little bit of a, 
a scary story going around the school um, that the kids like when you start and you're in year like one or two or three the kids from like the last year like year six um, they would like pass on this scary story so that all every time new kids came in the older kids would retell the same school story so this like spooky legend had literally been going on for years so much so that my mum went to this school and she knew about the story as well so fuck knows who invented this story it, it can be traced back as far as i know from up until the 70s or before the 70s so it's an old old story but basically the story goes that um the reason why there's only one school bell where there should be two hanging was because when the school was in its prime in victorian times the uh the old headmaster i think a lot of kids referred to him as like the demented headmaster he um went crazy like he lived in the school and he was in love with this woman and basically this woman, this bitch man, she broke his heart, cheated on him, left him. He just didn't know what to do. He didn't know where to turn. So he decided that he was going to, actually I should probably put a trigger warning here because although this isn't a true story, um, this story does mention suicide. So uh, the story goes that the demented headmaster was so heartbroken when his wife left him that one day after school when all of the kids went home he climbed to the top of the bell tower and um basically decided to hang himself on on the bells and as he hanged one of the bells came off with him and so that was the whole legend as to why there was only one bell and it was so popular like all of the kids whenever we were in like the um the break areas there would always be some older kid being like oh you know why there's only one bell at that school don't you mm, at the bell tower now here's the bit here's the bit that gives it away that it's not true and you tell me whether you would believe this so that story that i told you that's the, the gist of it and that story whilst it's quite eccentric it could seem plausible possibly could possibly very unlikely but it could be plausible the actual story is everything i just told you but i missed out one element of the story so the story goes that the old headmaster was so heartbroken when his uh wife left him or girlfriend i can't remember if it was a girlfriend or a wife so heartbroken that she left him that he decided to hang himself okay fine we got there so he's hanging from this bell and then <laughs> This is the actual story. This is where it gets ridiculous. So he decides that he's going to hang himself. He takes himself to the top of the bell tower. He gets everything ready to hang himself from the bells. And then he changes his mind and decides that he's not going to do that. So he starts untying himself. And at that point, a lizard, who inexplicably was at the school, a lizard, ran down his throat and choked him thus causing him to let go of the rope and then hang from the bell tower that was supposedly that was supposedly the story of what happened to the uh, the old headmaster and why there's only one bell and i kind of as i got older and thought about it i thought you know you could have just left it as just ha hung from the bell because that's somewhat believable but when you start getting fucking lizards involved and it just goes to show the things 10 year olds would believe because we all fucking believed it we all believed that there was like an evil lizard that lived in the bell tower that liked to run down the throat of people and force them to hang themselves quite bleak isn't it really for a load of primary school kids it was the 90s no one really gave much of a shit to be honest <laughs> we were just told anything there's uh, another another scary uh, story about a village the village that I grew up in also related to hanging which seems to be quite popular um, with scary stories where I'm from but there's um, there's a lane uh, in the village which is kind of like when you first go in there and to be fair it is actually I've been there and it is actually really scary, really scary looking lane it's called dead man's lane and uh, it was known for the um in like the 1600s it was the place where the villagers used to hang criminals um 
So, because I mean, like I said, the village is really old. So when someone was committing a crime and their punishment was to be hanged, then they would, it, the spot would be Dead Man's Lane. And so that's uh, where a lot of people were hung. And then after that, after um, hangings stopped being like a common practice, um, it still had a really bad reputation for people going and hanging themselves there. Um, so even though it wasn't a form of, you know, punishment, people still chose that spot uh, for themselves. And so there's lots of like stories about Dead Man's Lane being haunted and uh, it's, it sounds really bleak but there's lots of stories about if you go to Dead Man's Lane at a certain time, like when the sun goes down, apparently you see um, the ghosts of either the criminals or the people that hang themselves. Um, you see a, a silhouette of like their body swinging in the wind from the trees which is pretty fucking bleak, isn't it? You know, I kind of thought, do you know what would be fun? I'll tell, I'll just talk about some stories from the village where I grew up, because we, we were quite big on, like, uh, scary stories. And now I'm retelling them, I'm thinking, fuck me, Carla, this is pretty fucking dark. This is, I mean, this is not a kid's channel by any means, and this is not a kid's video, obviously. But, um, <laughs> some pretty fucking dark stuff, guys. <laughs> and I'm going to end this by being like, oh, happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, yeah, it's pretty dark, but... Could be true, who knows, who knows. I only have one other spooky story from the village that I grew up in. Um, when I first left school, when, well, when I left school, not when I first left school, when I left secondary school, um, I was at college and I worked part-time at a um, preschool for a few years. And this one, I wasn't here for, this is just something that um, my team leader told me. So the school that I worked in was next door to the primary school that I went to and it was like, it was in an area of this village that was supposed to be the most haunted, you know, like there's a small area in the village where you've got the schools, you've got Dead Man's Lane and it's kind of like notorious for being, there's also like a graveyard and a massive church. So like if you're in the village and you want to do something spooky or you want to do something for Halloween, that's where you go because that's apparently like a breeding ground for spooky shit. So anyway, um, my team leader was telling me about how she was the last one in the school, like, and when I say school, it's an overstatement, it was literally a building, like a very small building. Um, and so she was like closing up and uh, we do like, we used to do like, obviously washing and stuff, like laundry to clean like blankets and stuff for nap time. So everyone had gone, she was the last one there because she was locking up and she was just taking some bed sheets out of the tumble dryer and the tumble dryer was like in one of the storage rooms where we kept all of our toys and so she um, was taking some sheets out and there were a load of dolls in the corner and as she was doing it she said one of the dolls had been like switched on or had been triggered and she heard like a, a little girl's voice, like a doll's voice being like, haha, I see you. And she like freaked out and uh, I was like, what? well, what was it? And she said, well, I assumed it must have been a doll, but to be honest, that time of night, I was on my own. I didn't even check. I just literally took the sheets out and then locked up and went straight home. But then the next day, she obviously, you know, remembered and was like, oh, that was a bit weird. So she went through all of the dolls that were in this basket and uh, pushed the button for every one of them. Not one of them said that. Not one of them even had the same voice as the one that she heard. And I thought, oh, how'd you like that for creepy? Pretty creepy. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of history in that village. A lot of history. It's a popular spot for uh, ghost hunts as well. Like my family, I don't know why, I, I don't know whether this is a thing with my family or whether this is normal, but the women in my family, there's like a complete a bit of a divide really with the men and the women. Um, so I mentioned in videos before, like we're all very close. So this village that I'm talking about, um, everyone kind of lives there. I'm one of the only people that don't. My grandparents live there, my parents live there, my uncle lives there, my aunt lives there, all of my cousins live there. <laughs> um, considering how tiny of a village it is, you know, we really are taking over, but we've been there for years. And um, we're like, you know, we're very close. We spend a lot of time together and so, the men have like men's interests and they're all the fucking same like all of the men they just really fucking bum football and they proper fucking love going fishing 
and they just like they have the exact same hobbies they are as stereotypical as it gets so they are always going off you know down to a pub or just going fishing or something but here's the thing like all of the women not so much myself included but um like my mum my nan and my two aunts are really really into the supernatural like they love doing like ghost hunts ouija boards seances they love all that shit to the point where you know it was done so much at my grandparents house because that's like you know the mothership that's the main hub for us but i was so used to seeing that kind of stuff um as a teenager that it's kind of a bit of a comfort for me like i don't believe in ghosts at all really um, but I'm quite happy to do stuff like that because, you know, it's nice to spend time with them and also it's like, it's a comforting thing. You know when sometimes you can smell a certain smell and it reminds you of, um, like your family or a memory that you had. And so it's like, it's a comfort for me doing things or talking about ghosts and stuff, <laughs> which is a bit fucking weird, but it's a, it's a bit of a comfort because it reminds me of my family. They fucking love ghosts and shit. So we're always going on ghost hunts and things. Well, I say always. Before I moved here to the States, we were always doing uh, ghost hunts. And I, I couldn't even tell you how many we've done. Loads of them. Don't even know what I'm going to do on Halloween, uh, on Halloween day yet. I'm not sure. It's usually such an anticlimax because I'm always like, can't wait for Halloween. And then... You know, just goes by so quickly. I'd love to know in the comments what you guys are doing. Get some inspiration. I know at some point this week um, I'm going to be having a few uh, Halloween drinks with my Drunk Sundays compadre, Harriet. But other than that, not sure. Not sure. I've got about three Halloween costumes ready, so I obviously think I'm going to have a busy year. <laughs> Optimistic, but... Uh, but you've got to be optimistic sometimes, haven't you? You've got to. Oh, also, if you have any, I would love to hear any, um, like, short stories that you were told, like, in from your local, you know, wherever you grew up, if you had, like, stories like we did, for instance, with the, uh, the school bells. I'd love to hear them in the comments. But, yeah, I thought I would just uh, share some of those stories with you. I hope they freaked you out <laughs> as much as they freaked me out when I was ten. Yeah, this, uh, this is not going to be the last Halloween video. I have another one coming out in a couple of days. Um, we're going to see the return of an old beloved character for Halloween. So, excited about that. But yeah, I hope you guys have a, have a good one. You'll see me before then anyway. But yeah, I just, I love Halloween. It's my favourite time of year. It's so aesthetically satisfying, you know. Even just out of, like outside of specifically cobwebs and ghosts and, you know, spooky decorations. I really like the aesthetic of autumn anyway. The orange and brown wreaths, the pumpkins, spiced candles, blankets. Just generally being cosy. It reminds me that Christmas is on its way. Anyway, I should probably uh, wrap this up. So I will. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, um, I don't know, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.